by forensic psychologist Sarah Soderlund and paranormal investigator David Erickson. State of Mind is a show that features mentalism, mystery, and modern psychology with twists of cognitive process and challenges of the mind. News, discoveries, banter, and guests that talk all things fascinating. Join them every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Central, 10 p.m. Eastern, only on ParamaniaRadio.com. Hi, I'm Dr. Dave, host of Rockin' with Doc. Come join me to explore the world of music and let it drive your soul. You'll hear songs like... Here I am, rock you like a hurricane. And this... How about some classics like this? No matter what you'd like, you'll hear it here. Now on Saturdays and Sundays at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Join me every Sunday for the All Song Request Hour where you, the listener, get to pick your favorite tunes. And Saturday for my weekly themed playlist. The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual hosts and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Paramania, its affiliates, or its sponsors. You are listening to Paramania Radio. Welcome to Paramania Radio. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, wherever you happen to be in the world. Uh, a very, very warm welcome. You're listening to Leo Bonomo. And uh, we've got some great guests on here tonight. We've got uh, Kirsty and Matt Grogan. And they're, <laughs> and, uh, and they're mediums. And we'll be talking about their work and experiences. So if you want to call in for readings or ask questions, then please do uh, we're hoping to have a, a great time as always while being educated um Kirsty began to see spirit from an early age and uh, 13 years old she was shown her two eldest children and the names of them uh before obviously they were born 13's a little bit young um and uh, over the years she's um worked very hard for spirit she's uh, decided to do healing and did a healing uh with the nfsh uh, in 2003, she's also got some experience on channel radio as a presenter on the OSB show, and she's done various things like running uh, an inspirational Facebook group and uh, has run several mediumship and healing circles. She's worked all over uh, the country, southeast of England, Wales, Southern Ireland, Spain as a platform medium, and uh, she's a qualified healer and trainer trainer with the corinthians and uh that's uh, a specialized kind of uh, uh religious group isn't it uh, uh kirsty um yeah it's, it's it's um it's a group that um bring together um all various different forms of um you know uh, spiritual stuff um we we um do the healing with them and um uh, they run churches um, all around uh, the Kent uh, coast and um, the rest of England. Yeah, um, I mean, the, the Corinthians is a, a UK-based uh, Christian spiritualist group. Mm. Uh, but um, with that, they have centres throughout the UK and abroad in Spain, Ireland, and a few other European countries as well. 
and uh, they're based down in um, Hailsham, which is on the Sussex coast in the uh, southeast of England. Oh, right. The first time I heard about the Corinthians uh, actually was many, many years ago when we used to have things called encyclopedias. That gives my age away. Um, but I also um, heard about the Corinthians through uh, some of Leslie Flint's um, uh, recordings, which we play from time to time here. Um, so Kirsty's an accredited medium and she's also studying uh, to be a hypnotherapist and that includes past life progression so that's still to come she's still working on that matt came to spirit much later in life and uh, uh like most of us uh, as he's looked back he can see different points where spirit were there and intervened and generally showed themselves so um uh that that's uh, really how how matt got started he's uh, generally clairvoyant and clairsentient and he does enjoy working with spirit and giving accurate information um as we all do hopefully it's all always accurate uh matt started working uh, for spirit in two, 2010 and uh starting the journey as a treasurer in a local spiritualist church in north northeast england uh, then joined a circle and started working with other mediums so uh things have uh, moved uh, sounds like pretty pretty quick for matt he started and completed reiki to master's level ran national and international spiritualist facebook groups and written arg- um, articles for magazines and also qualified as a spiritual healer and trainer and um uh, are you still awaiting your assessment for the snu platform accredited uh, yeah, we're still waiting the, the final bits of that, and hopefully uh, that's going to be in the next month or so. Um, I've completed all the work, barring the actual final assessment. Now that's all I'm waiting for. Um, right. But to to me, you know, that's where my passion lies with the mediumship. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. It just faded a little bit then, uh, Matt. So I'm not sure. Um... Uh, uh, if you can still hear me, hopefully you can. Uh, you, you know, we'll all, we'll all say prayers. I'm sure you don't need them, but uh, to get through and become qualified. Uh, fantastic. So, um, either of you first. Um, what was your very first experiences um, with with uh, mediumship? The first hard and fast thing that you could say um, that was a really strong experience. For me, um, as you um, said earlier on, um, I was um, in school, standing um, in the cafeteria, waiting um, um, in the lunch queue. And um, I knew that um, I was going to have a boy first, and I knew his name. And I was going to have a daughter next, and I knew her name. And um, obviously, I, I didn't know why I knew it. I just knew it. Um, I always always knew as well that um, I was never alone. I had this feeling that even though sometimes in uh, my childhood um, I obviously was on my own, I never felt I was alone. I always knew I had um, extra help around me, the unseen help. Yeah, yeah. It's. Um, I, I think a lot of people get that. Um, um, can you? I'm not sure quite what's happened, but the volume's gone down slightly. It's. Um, I don't know if you've changed position or anything, but uh, uh, if, if um, uh, you 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 can undo whatever you did, that'd be great. Um, it, when you get um, uh, very slightly, I don't know whether you've moved the mic or not. Maybe. Maybe that. No, no, we haven't. In fact, I've moved forward, so I'll speak a little louder. Oh, okay. That, that's great. That's great. Sometimes you overcompensate. We move closer to the mic and then think it will pick it up. And uh, yeah, um, I, I find it fascinating that we, we have these um, experiences, like you say, at 13, and you, you know the children and you know their names. It's because um, when we get that, that kind of thing, it's a very strong feeling, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, I, I, well, I didn't really understand what was going on. And, mm. um, you know, it, it was only sort of later in life when um, I, I fully sort of learnt about um, the ways of mediumship that I mm. realised what was happening. I mean, 
also um I used to have strange experiences. Um, for example, if I was running late, I would go uh, be able to come up to the traffic lights um, when I was in my um, early t- uh, early twenties, and I'd yeah. go. Go green, go green, and it would go green. It was awesome. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't do that now. <laughs> oh, that's another superpower wasted. I, 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 th- I it's think, a shame. yeah, I think ninety percent of the world, if they had a superpower, that's what they'd want. It'd cause havoc, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, like you, I, I've had um, those kind of experiences and I knew when my my first daughter, my eldest daughter, um, was going to be born. And that's something that you can't explain to sceptics. You know, they go, oh, well, you know, everyone gets those feelings. They're um, Obviously, they've got their own reasons for trying to dismiss everything. But um, it is such a strong, strong feeling. So, um, Matt, tell us about yours. Um. <clears throat> well, obviously, I know it isn't now, but at the time I thought it was a bit of a party trick. I mm. would say to somebody that um, you're going to have a, a baby. Um, and it wasn't just like that. I'd say you're going to have a, a baby on the 29th of January uh, mm. next year. And this was like maybe 15 months before. And, yeah, yeah. And then uh, one of our friends, I, I'd said that too. And I was actually one day out. Um <laughs> And I had I had experiences like that, and I thought, oh, this is lucky, isn't it? I'm I'm <laughs> I'm suddenly being able to predict babies being born, and I thought, well, if that isn't a party trick, what isn't? Uh, mm. And then, obviously, uh, as time progressed, I understood then that obviously it was it was spirit working with me. Yeah. Uh, but I had really bizarre things where you know people who couldn't have babies who were uh, having IVF and things like that and were told they couldn't have babies for whatever reason, mm. were suddenly, I, I, I said to somebody, you can have a baby, and um, they turned to me and says, no, that's not possible. And I didn't know where to look. <coughs> I'm yeah. quite embarrassed, but I don't know why I had to say that to that person. And yet I saw them um, about 10 months later pushing a pram. So... <laughs> although it was quite embarrassing for myself and I was a bit more careful of what I said to people. Um, I, I sort of had those experiences from my, um, from my early twenties, um, is when I, I, for me, I, I had, um, I was aware of spirit. Uh, Mm. as I look back now, I had odd experiences as a child, but that was the main thing for me, early twenties. But I came into, um, into my spiritual way of being later on in life because of uh, personal circumstances yeah. as, as you know, and that was my awakening. And I now look back and think all the things that I thought was a lucky guess or a party <laughs> trick was very much, you know, um, spirit trying to say to me, hello. And unfortunately <laughs> at the time I wasn't aware. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it's nice the way that um, spirit judge it beautifully. You know, they, they kind of give us uh, what we can handle and they don't want to freak us out. And they go, well, you know, a few experiences here and there and and that. And I know that lots of people have um, those kind of experiences. And um, and uh, for them, it doesn't always mean they're going to become a medium. But it, but it is that kind of wake up call, isn't it? You know, from spirit saying there's something else. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <clears throat> what I find interesting, um, Matt, is that because I'm a great believer in prediction, um, we seem to accept it with tarot. We seem to expect it with. Um, other forms of mediumship you know in some ways especially with tarot etc um, predictions taken for granted um, but we're not really although I do we're not really supposed to give predictions from from platform um, so how do you feel about that do, does prediction come in for you sometimes on platform um, I still get uh, very much the connection with the babies Mm. um the, but you know i'm not one for giving predictions to me that's mm. not our role as mediums to me yeah. uh, and obviously Kirsty will comment in a second but to me it's about us giving evidence of the, the world of spirit and it's about yeah. us bringing that person's life to life 
You know, yeah. when you, you've got someone very close to you who's lived a life of 80, 90 or not as long as that years, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> it's unfair to basically say, well, I've got, you know, your uncle who's very special to you. However, I feel the prediction is that next year you're going to be better off with money. That's an injustice to me to spirit and mm. not the way that I, I like to work. I, I don't know how Kirsty feels about that. For, for me, I feel that um, if um, spirit were to give too many predictions, that mm. would um, basically l- let us lose our um, ability to make decisions because we'd always be asking those for which way you know to go and everything and what how it's going to turn out and and we kind of lose our free will a little bit. So I do feel that um, although spirit will help us out with some things when they tell us. Um, sort of when they give us messages a lot of the time they're they're a bit cautious of doing too much because Mm. the last thing they want is to take our decisions therefore our lessons away from us so then we won't have the growth yeah um uh, i I do understand what you're saying and and i know that that's um um very much true for for um, us as mediums as well isn't it because we tend not to get messages for ourselves uh, for that very reason that it, it it's uh, it influences um, uh, how we make a decision or if we make that decision at all so uh, I do I do understand that um, now um, you've got a, a healing website haven't you Kirsty? Um, yes, uh, healing with Kirsty. Um, I do uh, various different sort of healing healing modalities. I I do um, healing with crystals. I do angelic Reiki, um, and I do um, spiritual healing as well. Um, I'm very blessed because it's a, a beautiful uh, modality that anybody can do. But mm. um, it's it's um, it's just a I feel a wonderful gift that you know everyone can sort of share and. And, and you know sort of join in with because it's very easy just to send the healing out um, mm. you basically all you have to do is ask and and ask that that person may receive that healing in themselves so it's a very a lovely lovely thing to do I think it is I think for people that aren't perhaps um, sensitive or just uh, uh, woken I think it's a wonderful thing to to have that connection with spirit and ask for healing for people or to uh, uh, people saying that they're going to ask for healing for them themselves. Because I think as you as you get connected to that energy, even if you're on the periphery of it, um, it does start to wake you up more. Uh, so I, I think generally for mankind, um, if, if we all... Um, understood it exists and all tried to to use it in that sense i I think that people would become much more spiritual you know certainly given them a few years i think as they wake up more i think that'd be a great benefit for the planet agreed i mean when you think about it what does the first thing a mother do what's the first thing a mother does when her child falls over you know if it's their knee they land on she'd rub their knee so mm. if that's not a form of healing and when we talk to one another and uh, explore our feelings and be a gentle friend, you know, a good ear for someone to listen to. Again, that's also healing. It's, it's within us all to be able to do. And, you know, spirit used that as well, because um, when I was learning, I actually learned um, to, to, you know, tame my gifts, if you like, mm. um, explore my gifts. Um it was actually healing that um, first sort of pulled me in. It. Um, and as I was giving the healing, um, I, I had messages come through. Um, and, um, you know, obviously you have to be aware working under certain different bodies. You're not allowed to give mediumship with healing. Yes. But, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, rules and regulations <laughs> and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah. But... Um, spirit will find a way and they found the way because that's what made me believe in it even more because I was getting these images and and voices and as I was connecting with spirit world they jump in with the you know the mediumship as well so it was lovely really lovely yeah I had experiences of that um some years ago when um 
uh, uh, I started. Uh, I was I was only there about a week, um, and you'll you'll realise why when I tell you. Um, uh, I started um, uh, uh, doing healing with the NFSH, and uh, I was getting a lot of messages through, and I did start to give them. And uh, 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 cut a long story short, they weren't so happy. Um, and I kind of had my answers for that part of which you've brought up, which is, you know, that if then if they're not going to get them that way, um, I felt myself personally, um, if spirit have gone to so much trouble to use this route, perhaps because that person wouldn't go to a medium um, and wouldn't get messages, uh, who am I to stand in the way? So uh, the NFSH and myself fell out. Uh, wow. so many years ago i completely uh, because, understand that mm, yeah yeah because it, you know it's it's spirit, spirit will find a way you know um whatever way yeah. they need to connect they will grab that and so yes i i don't always understand i do understand why some healing organizations won't do it but yeah. i also think there's a little bit of me thinks well actually you know what spirit are trying to get through so yeah. it's difficult isn't it yeah, I, I think uh, my my parting parting words on that to whoever I was speaking to many years ago was, you know, uh, well if God decides that that's okay and you don't, who have got to choose? Um, and obviously oh. made my decision and left, <laughs> and left <laughs> um, as you do, you know. But like you say, it's rules and regulations, and um, um, I think it's like any companies, you know, or organisations. You you, um, you start reading through the handbook, and you think oh, that, oh, that don't make sense, and um, mm. I can't see why that's there. But um, yeah, so um, so how long have you um, worked together? Do you uh, first of all do you do workshops together? Uh, uh, um, and how long has, has that been going? Because I do feel that you started them individually. Um, yeah, well, we, we've um, at the moment we've got um, coming in October and November, we've got Healing with the Angels, we've got an Angels workshop, and developing your mediumship. Um, Spirit put us together. We did initially mm. start... Um, on our own but uh spirit as you know i'm sure have their <laughs> their certain ways of telling you things and we just got pulled <laughs> together and and the majority of the time you know although we do work individually majority mm. of the time spirit seem to want us to work together because we work so differently and i think it gives a little bit of variety for those that sort of you know watches they can relate to either myself or matt and um you know, between the pair of us, it, we've usually got best part of half the room at least covered. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, again, I, I think it's wonderful because uh, there is a nice blend in there. And as you say, you know, um, uh, uh, if someone sort of understands something in a particular way and uh, they relate to Matt better in that or yourself. Um, I think that's wonderful. And, and yeah, it, it's, it's interesting that you brought up that point of, um, you know, spirit kind of bringing you together because as we know, spirit can't take away free will. Um, but what it does is it relates to those decisions we've made before we've incarnated and they just gently uh, or sometimes not so gently remind us of, of that mm. commitment we've made. Mm. Yeah, definitely. And I think there's there's, there's also that, um, you know, whether you believe it or not, there's that sort of past life sort of belief that, you know, I do feel very strongly, obviously we're both married as well, mm. um, is that there is the belief from the pair of us because of different conversations and experiences we had that we have lived other lives together as well. And, uh, you know, I'm sure there's many people on the show, maybe even yourself that has had similar experiences where you just know that it isn't by chance you got together, be it for a relationship purposes or to do spiritual work. You know, it's all part of a master plan that you, you know, it, yes, you signed up for before coming down here, but, is also one that's been experienced and ongoing through many lives as well. Uh, absolutely. Well, um, uh, I, I'm uh, now divorced and I was divorced in 2013 and uh, uh, I was married 33 years and knew my um, ex for 36. And one thing that I realized was 
that we we had been married in various guises so sometimes i was the the, the woman the wife um, but we'd been we'd spent four lives together um and my kind of um uh, my acceptance of that was total i knew it was right and everything uh but obviously when when the marriage got into trouble and we divorced i kept thinking um I need to be learning from this somewhere along the line. <laughs> it's one of those duh moments, you know, when you think, um, surely I can get this right. But, um, yeah, uh, you, you, as, as you probably know, um, we all belong to a soul group and, uh, well, we can belong to many soul groups. So, for example, if you're a healer, you may belong to a healing soul group, uh, etc. Um, but w- th- there can be uh, many hundreds of individuals in a soul group, and we tend to incarnate with those in one form or another. So we might be a son or a mother um, or a cousin or, or something or a friend, indeed. <clears throat> um, so we kind of interchange those um those places and that's something i find um extremely interesting the different roles we play but obviously all connected and uh, often we don't find out do we it's it's when we get over and we well it's quite bizarre actually because um i um i was um i had a relationship before matthew and i had a um a, my daughter but unfortunately he passed away he's actually now become one of my guides because he had um, he had gifts and he never used them when he was on the earth plane. But now he's over the other side. He comes forward to help me. And I believe that he's kind of practicing on me so he can now work with my daughter when she's older. Well, yeah, um, again, that's interesting because, you, you know, people have um, the uh, the belief or the myth that um, our guides are, you, you know, really high, they're this, they're that and everything. Uh, but we forget that um, they have to train as well. Mm. So mm. it's an interesting, you know, they're, they're not just kind of born for it, although we'd all like to believe they are. Yeah. Um, I hope when I get over at some point, I'll become a guide to someone, but I'm going to take a good long rest for a few hundred years if I can. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just get the, get well, if you've seen a picture of me, I shave my head, but I was just going to say, you know, get the wing through my hair for a little bit and then <laughs> do that. You've done your, you've done your penance then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not quite sure, but we, uh, we all hope, don't we? Um, we're just going to go uh, into a break now. So we'll be straight back after this with uh, Kirsty and Matt, and we'll give you some numbers if you want to ring in.
Ryan Show every Thursday night at 8 o'clock on Terramaniaradio.com. Up aboard the haunted ship of doom and join Captain Chris. It was the government secretly outside of the studio. Skipper Wayne. I think it's time you get the Kraken out of your butt. Deck wench, Joe. Yeah, I got stuck on the corner. And of course, cabin boy, Todd. Oh, look where I'm sitting. And always remember our motto. Don't just listen to the mayhem. Be a part of it. So it's Monday. Yeah. And what do we always do on Monday? Duh. We go on the air. Where at? Uh, Paramania. How long have you been doing this? Well, long enough, but we need to let other people know. I know. You'd be like, this is Teresa. And please come join us for Set Chat and After the Lunches. Okay. And this is laugh. Jay. Hey, and y'all. This is Big Dumb Red Net. Come listen to us here on ParamaniaRadio.com. I got my stones and my crystals. I make you feel all tingly inside. And I'm about as sensitive as a rock. You are a rock. <laughs> Just start as one. <laughs> what time? 7 to 9 p.m. Where are you at? I'm right here. Why? I'm sitting next to you. You're looking at me. I'm not laughing in the studio with you. You do bad things. Oh, no. Not all the time. <laughs> you guys come and listen to us. I would. On ParamaniaRadio.com. I would because she's funny. Monday nights, 7p to 9p. Eastern Daylight Time. ParamaniaRadio.com. <laughs> if you would like to be kept up to date on upcoming show information and events here on Paramania Radio, then please take the time to click on the like button above the chat room to like our Facebook page. And click on follow to follow us on Twitter. Thank you for listening to Paramania Radio. You are listening to Paramania Radio. Hi, welcome back uh, to Paramania Radio. You're listening to Leo Bonomo, Voice of Spirit. Um, if you do want to call in and you want some readings, you can get us on the United States number. It's 919-2950-150. Or you can get us on Facebook.com. And it's uh, Facebook.com forward slash Paramania Radio. Um, so that's on air now. So if you want to look there, that's great. We don't have Skype anymore. Um, so, uh, try not, to, try not to do that, but we do have a chat room. So, um, welcome back, um, uh, Kirsty and Matt. We were talking, bless you. Um, we were talking during the break, weren't we, of, um, life experiences and, uh, uh mediums, uh, apparently getting the rougher end of the stick at, at times. Yeah. Yeah, well, we, we, we discussed, didn't we, that um, it, mostly um, if you talk to um, the best part of all mediums, they've had a bit of a rough ride. Mm. And um, we all kind of felt really did, that um, one of the reasons that that was the case is then when we um, give messages to, um, you know, the, 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 the loved ones that are, are on this plane, um, you know, we can then empathise a lot more and understand a little bit of what they're going through because spirit tend to go to um, me, certainly, mm. with lots of things that I have been through myself. Um, and the very same with Matt, that he will get very similar uh, experience uh, experiences with the same sort of people, you know. Um, and it's, it's, it's amazing, really, when you think about how spirit pair you up like that. But um, you have to, um, you know, you, you in order to, to get through to people on a human level um, and not to come across as being patronising, and, and um, it, it's, it's, it's very important that you understand or at least, you know, have gone through something similar to them. Yeah, I think you need a notion of it because part of the um, uh, the experience of development is going through an experience, going through that range of emotions. And, of course, as we're training, they're um, bringing some of those uh, emotions and experiences back. So we then uh, uh, recognize that, understand that feeling, and we store it away. I, I, I've got a very firm belief that we all have our own private code in our head. So particular things would mean particular things um, uh, would have a certain meaning for me that 
wouldn't do for you or a different meaning. And of course, when we relive those experiences and, and we get the kind of flavours of, of those emotions, they get locked away. So when a loved one comes through, we get the taste of that emotion again and, and an outline of the experience and we go, right, I understand what's going on. And it shortcuts everything. Um, I think I said earlier in the program, it, it's nice that you, you both work differently because I do feel that you blend very well. Yeah, no, thank you for that. Uh, I, we both we both have our own different approaches mm. and not to say that it's one's better than the other. I would say that they complement each other and the yeah. energies are, are right. And, you know, there'll be people who will be drawn more to Kirsty and say, you know, I like her um, emotional sort of empathetic sort of approaches and where she mm -hmm. almost comes down to the people's level uh, and they get that. And then, you know, you come with with myself at a completely different angle as well. And, I, you know, I think both ways work. And, uh, you know, a lot of people in the past booked us individually and said, you know, I, I want Matt or I want Kirsty. And what yeah. we find now, probably 85, 90% of, of our bookings now are together because mm. they just feel it's a different kind of energy. And, you know, at the end of the day, we know it, we know it works in the churches that we serve um, in the different countries know it works. But yeah. ultimately, as you know, spirit know it works and that's why they brought us together and it was almost like a, a bog off offer you know buy one, <laughs> get, uh, one free type of thing and uh, that that sort of um approach I, I i would say works well and we mm. we come at things from different angles but at the same times we always put uh, a respect for what we do yeah. we're, we're always very humble and very grateful every time um, and and Kirsty makes the comment uh, when she's up on platform is we love our job and we don't want to lose it and that you oh. know that's very much uh, true because we're in a very honoured position to work for Spirit yeah. to represent yeah. Spirit but also to represent uh, and be sympathetic and empathic to um, the people here in the in the churches all around mm. the world um, because we're serving them just as much as we're serving Spirit uh, and those above. Uh, absolutely absolutely and um again i think it, it's it's nice to to see um two mediums working together because more specifically people can see um the different approach um the different way that you work and the different delivery uh because one one thing I, i've found which I, I think is is a shame, and that sometimes you'll get very well known mediums, and they have students, and the students, uh, for whatever reason, or they're encouraged to emulate that that medium, down to characteristics, delivery, pacing, uh, and I find that's a great shame because. Yeah. You know that that well-known medium has become well-known because they are being them, not you know a little a little mini me. Um, so I, I actually feel sorry for some of the students because they've obviously got talent, but when you're uh, mimicking, for want of a better word, um, uh, the delivery, etc., uh, I do think that's a great shame. So uh, I, I think generally the public know that different mediums work different ways but I, I don't feel it does any harm to kind of um um expose that at times well we teach um <clears throat> several different uh, development groups mm -hmm. and we always make a point of saying that you are individual as a person your personality is different to the the chap next to you so mm -hmm. that is how spirit will work you they will work you for your spirit you know the way your uh, personality works you Absolutely. as an individual and and we're very strong on that because um i talk well, I'm talking quite slowly at the moment, but usually when I'm working, I talk very fast. Um, I get often get the cheeky ones come through. 
and um they're, yeah they're a little bit naughty sometimes <laughs> I have to <laughs> I don't know kind of what that says about my personality but <laughs> um, but they they are drawn to me because of my personality and you know I get um we, we get a lot of sort of respectful um um gentlemen and ladies come to Matt um mm-hmm. because of the way he um delivers and the way his personality is and we we think that um it's almost like taking the human out of being a human being mm. if you decide to have clones for want of a better word yeah yeah uh, and again I, I think you know um thank god it doesn't happen too often but i think if that did start to happen um you know we'd lose the public because they go oh yeah seen one seen them all you yeah. know, and it, it yeah. is very, very, very important. Um, there's a guy, I can't remember his name now, um, but he used to, uh, when he'd got a message, um, he'd act it. Oh. So rather than giving the message, you know, he, he'd, um, uh, yeah, I can't, I can't think of a better way of putting it. Um, he acted it. And uh, I actually found that quite strange because it, it almost turned the the mediumship into into a sideshow i mean he, he delivered and he got accurate information and it was just the way that he overemphasized it but i, I think some of that was his character I, you know i do feel that he he was someone that um actually yearned for the stage but i've never seen that in any in any other medium um i think so spirit put, sorry i think spirit put us together because they they're bringing back the humor factor we are man and wife and sometimes mm. there is a little bit of um poking at each other if you like <laughs> on yeah. the platform and yeah. that comes across because that makes us human and then people can relate to us and and you know they 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 can understand then that mm. mediumship isn't this strange thing it's actually quite a normal very lovely gift that everybody i believe has and you know when we go up there um, on the on the platform and and give our messages and stuff, people see that about us, and they they see that you know it. Um, although I'm not too happy with the word normal because I think that's quite an insult, <laughs> but we are relatively normal. Yeah, that's yeah. questionable. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, 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 I think for me the. Mm. Although we're doing a very honourable thing of serving spirit and we're very grateful for what we do, Mm. but to me, it's about bringing the human side to spiritualism. And, you know, that was one of the reasons for us of agreeing to, um, and thank you for the offer of coming on to the show. Oh, But it was, it was, it was the, 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 the opportunity to basically say you we're not robots we're not something special in we've got superpowers and you know or equally that we're strange or different we're just uh, as normal as best we can be and we understand everything that w- everyone else goes through we experience everything that goes uh, everyone goes through mm. we're no different and i think there's almost there's times where you say there's almost people who emulate other mediums mm. and there are also times where they make out some mediums that they are better or they're on a higher plane than anybody else yeah. but for us and uh, i'm sure um, from the energy from yourself as well it is that it's not it's about bringing it to the people you mentioned like Leslie Flynn and all of the greats of the past. Mm. And, you know, none of them, a lot of them would go round to the houses and, you know, yes, they filled up the big halls of the Albert Halls in London and places, but a lot of it was, you know, all pal round to uh, Joe Bloggs round the corner and then see them going into this. And it was basically, there you go, I've given you that. I don't want a badge for it. I don't want to say I'm the world's best. I'm a human being that's been able to deliver a message. And for that, thank you. And that is what we try and do. We don't feel we want to do anything blasé. We don't feel we're anything special. We're just here to deliver a very special message Mm. and to do that in a humanistic way that people say, you know what, that person gets me Mm. and has brought that person through just the way they are. And I think if... If we can do that in uh, in the right way, without saying, you know, 
I've got your grandfather with a flat cap here and he's very old. Yeah. If we mm. give the evidence to back that, then I feel that, you know, it, it allows people who wouldn't normally go through church doors or to other venues to sort of say, you know what, this isn't what I perceived it to be. And perhaps yeah. I misjudge this and I see things differently. And perhaps this is something to be followed and something to be understood because when you listen to people be it in development circles mediums or people in spiritual churches or spiritual ways of life every one of them says i wish i would have discovered this at a different point in my life mm-hmm. because it has made my life better and more complete but what they do forget to think is you know it's not that they were meant to discover it they were meant to discover it at the time that they discovered it uh, absolutely i'm a great believer in that you know because th- th- there's always a time that's right and and being human we tend to think well i'd like it in my time um but it, it's not it, it, it's when it's right um uh, for spirit first uh, you know and for the moment and for us second and uh, uh, i agree with you totally um, you know about ego that it that it has to be kept in line it's uh, of course we need a little bit to get up on platform and to do you know um, whatever we do whether it's small venues or or something larger um, but we do need to keep that in line because again you know um, uh, some mediums do pro- propose that myth or um uh, that they you know that yes they do have a great gift but you know it, it's it's more about them um and again i think that's something that puts people off and yeah. i think you've explained it very well that uh we've all got this gift we certainly have um for some people it's brought forward and for others they're meant to live this life uh with less or no involvement um so you you know that takes precedence obviously um but it is a normal thing uh you know i think if we went back um um uh, uh, a few thousand years uh, or further we all we all had those instincts of this herb is right you know there's something not right about this situation and maybe it's um I don't know, a tiger or a saber-toothed um, uh, cat that's there. And we all have this instinct which tells us something's not quite right. And we had tended to have lost that. But I do feel there's been um, a big change, a big shift. And so there are more people awake now, I think, uh, on this planet, although there are more people <laughs> than ever before. But I think there are more people awake on this planet than, than ever before. I feel that materialism, people aren't getting the satisfaction from that anymore. So they're mm. looking for other ways to move forward. And, you know, this, this, and <clears throat> forgive me for using the, this word, new, so called new age, because it isn't mm. new age. It's been around forever. So I, I don't exactly. feel that, um, you know, that I don't like that term particularly. I feel mm. like we need to go back to our old ways um, <laughs> in, in, that, in that respect. But people are, are getting more fulfilment through rediscovering the gifts that they were given and have just forgotten about. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it, it is a natural thing, you know, because everyone will say, well, you know, um, we know about a gut instinct and like the other side of that coin is, you know, women's intuition. So I think people are quite aware it's there. But um, again, there's this um, impression given by some mediums. Well, yeah, you might have one percent, you know, but I've got a hundred percent. And, you know, that's what makes me special. And um, um, I've said this before. Um, uh, quite a few times, uh, doing myself out of a job, really. But it would be ideal if um, mediums uh, like us uh, didn't have any work because people would have their own contact with spirit. And I think that's where we need to get to. Uh, I know it's not a popular thing to say, um, and God knows what I'd do if I didn't do this, but it's that natural contact, isn't it? You you know, you you have societies in... um, you know, um, villages in the Amazon and that, and they're so connected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm a great believer in in sort of um, 
pulling it out of people as well. I'm, I'm spirit normally take me to sort of the younger people in uh, the congregation um, or the audience because um, they they want the newer ones to come up and come forward mm. as you know as the the older mediums decide to sort of trot off home and leave the rest of us, which is yes. a bit rude. <laughs> but um, Absolutely. We, we need the younger ones to just come up and keep going and keeping, you know, sort of to open up to the rest of the world what a, a wonderful gift this is. Mm, yeah. Um, I, I used to, um, I was having a conversation um, with my guide many years ago and um i was being slightly um uh negative oh we've got a caller um if we can hold the caller till um after the break that would be wonderful um okay um yeah and it was slightly negative because i could see um that the world was changing there seemed to be a lot of um negative things going on and i was having this conversation with my guide and and one of the things that i said was that um, I feel really sorry for kids nowadays because I'm still very much a child at 14 or 15. And they're, they're streetwise at age uh, eight now, you know, and sometimes younger. And uh, my guide said, well, you know, we've got a short time here. And the reason for being here is experience. And if you can cram in more experience at a younger age and experience more while you're here it it's actually better and and i immediately understood what he was saying um because i saw it as a negative but actually yeah it's it's not um we might not agree with the way society is going um but we're certainly cramming in that experience aren't we yeah very much so but i you know i i think there's this uh, also belief that you know the younger ones they need to get a bit more experience and mm. you know they need to experience life a bit to uh, um understand what they're talking about and to empathize but you know mm -hmm. kirsty mentioned that her, pre her previous partners obviously her working with herself now and yeah. we find uh, with a uh, stepdaughter that she's been through a lot of experiences herself that a lot of adults haven't been through and i think mm -hmm. you know there's there's many young uh, individuals throughout the world who've had a lot of experiences that perhaps uh, the people a um, hundred years ago wouldn't have had, you know, mm. they're very open now to technology and to information. Uh, and, yeah. you know, I, I do feel that there's a lot of the young, the young now can teach us a lot. And as I always say, when uh, we're doing mediumship, uh, you know, the young can teach us how to have fun. You know, we have this misconception when we get older, we've got to suddenly not have fun and we've got to be responsible. And, you know, <clears> and hopefully Kirsty uh, and yourselves are proven that's not the case. But um, it is about having fun and it's learning just as much from the young ones as it is from our, our elders. And I think it should be a two way process. And it doesn't yeah. matter if you're young or young uh, or old. It's about being individual and going back to what you said before about the almost mimicking other mediums. Mm -hmm. Spirit chooses us for our individual self, our own personalities. Yeah. They see the different light in ourselves, but they see us ultimately as individuals. And I think if we can see uh, the people within the churches, with the people who we come into contact as individuals with their own life experiences, but equally that med mediums can be seen as individuals and should be promoted for the way that they work individually and not almost to be sort of uh, a supermarket, shove them out, everyone the same. Yeah, uh, uh, absolutely. And I think one of the reasons that um, youngsters are getting a lot of life experience, you know, um, uh, at a double rate very young is – we actually need younger mediums, but years ago they wouldn't have had the life experience to deal with it. So I think that's got something to do with it. But of course, the the longer that you're working as a medium, um, the longer, um, in some cases, you're able to work because spirit will keep you alive uh, as long as you're being useful. Um, but you've you can you know I learn something every day, but. Um, the longer you work, the more experience you get and the more you can encourage others. So I think there's a very, very definite 
um, plan there from spirit to cramming, you know, at a young age that open up and work for as long as you can. Yeah, and I, the the thing that worries me about that, I just remember Kirsty saying to me earlier, I was pretty useless and not much use. So that mm. doesn't say a lot for if there's a lot more time left for me, does it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised I've kept going this long myself. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, it's um, uh, I, I've been blessed to have seen spirit from a young age, and um, and I learn something every day. Uh, and, you know, what I usually learn is that uh, I don't really know a lot. There's a, there's such a long way to go. Um, but hopefully that keeps me level. OK, um, we're going to go into a break and uh, we've got a caller after this. So we'll see you after the break. Yeah. you want to hear different viewpoints on the spirit world then join alan cox as he talks with his guests about their beliefs experiences and delve into a diverse view of life and the afterlife join alan cox for understanding spirit every thursday at 4 p.m eastern 9 p.m greenwich mean time here on the paramania radio network 
Hey guys, I got the perfect song for the show. What do you think about this? Turn the hell is this? Dude, this is not the boring psychic. Oh, okay, how about this instead? Take out the papers and the trash. This is an area. Oh, you don't get those bending cash. No, 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 no. This is what I'm talking about. Yeah! The party is live every Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, with a twist of metal. Melissa Bruce is the heavy metal psychic. Only on Paramania Radio. Be there. Welcome to the all-new Paramania Radio. Don't go by the book. Think like a pirate. Hi, welcome back. You're listening to uh, Leo Bonomo on Paramania Radio. We've got Kirsty and Matt Grogan here. If you do want to call in, it's 919-2950-150. And we've got a caller, and it's area code 819. Hi, who's this? Uh Aha. Hi. Hi, uh, who's that? <laughs> this is uh, Selini. I'm in the chat room. Oh, hi, Selini. Bless you. Thank you for um, for uh, uh, calling up. Um, we're oh, Fellini. I'm sorry. Um, uh, one of my ears is working, and one isn't. I do apologise for that. Um, we've we've got Matt and um, and Kirsty here. So. Uh, um, uh, <clears throat> sorry, I forgot what I was going to say. Something's changed on screen, which really threw me. Sometimes uh, spirit just kind of uh, shock me. Um, okay, um, so we've got Matt and Kirsty here. Um, have you? Do, do, um, do you want a reading from them, and uh, we'll get one or both to answer? Sure. Thank you. Good love that. Okay. Bless you. Okay, um, Matt or Kirsty? Um, hello, Fellini. Hi. Hi. Um, um, there's, there's a father figure that's around you at the moment, and this this could be dad, but it could also be somebody that is like a father to you. Um, and I, I need to say he's coming around you at the moment to give you some comfort. Would you understand this, my lovey? I, I feel that things um, have been very difficult for you. He comes in um, with, um, he, he seems to be quite cross with somebody around you. Um, and um, he, he he just wants to protect you and ask you to look after yourself a little bit better. Because I feel that you've been in the wars and you need to put yourself first and think about what you want at the moment. Would you understand this, my lovely? Yes, I do. Um, I, I feel that he, um, um, as he as he comes forward, he would have been um, a man that um, would have um, known exactly what he was doing and which way. But he also would have been a very protective man. He would have um, always had your back in a way that was kind of um, not very lovey dovey, but in a kind of manly way. If you make if that makes sense, um, he's also asking you to um um have a have a look um at ways that are going to make you happy because you seem to have not been able to do that in the sense that i feel you need to find what feeds your soul okay. do you understand this yeah. um yeah because i need to build you back up again okay i uh, i also feel that um the, the father figure that's around yourself would have uh, been sort of around about 5'9", five, 5'10", five, height. He gives me the significance of April the 14th, uh, April the 17th. Would you understand the significance of those dates? Uh, the, the number 17, yes, and it would be March, 
not April. Right, um, no, it's definitely it's definitely April. I would definitely want to go um, April okay. the fourteenth. April the fourteenth. Um, if it's not that day, I'm going um, a day either side of that. So I'm going the 13th to the 15th of April. Uh, this gentleman was very proud gentleman. He was uh, very honest. Uh, but I want to say with the gentleman, he um, if he 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 had a way of putting things. And I want to say with this gentleman, he he's trying to say to you that you've got to stop listening to the viewpoints of other people. And what I mean by that is negative viewpoints, because I do feel that there is a, a little bit of um, of a fracard around yourself. Would you understand that? Um, yes, 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 okay. Would you understand um, tummy problems or anxiety around yourself? Um, I, um, he asked me to to tell you that everything is going to sort itself out. He's not telling me what it is because that's obviously not for public demonstration. It's to it's a private thing for yourself. But I do feel that things are going to settle down for you, and it's it, I, I feel that the light of the it, it, at the end of the tunnel is coming for you. So you're being asked to stay positive. Okay. Thank you. I, I, also, I, I also want to say to yourself that it's for you to trust yourself. I know that's a, quite a hard, uh, it's an easier thing to say than actually be, but you are a, a very intuitive lady yourself, and I want you to trust your own abilities and your own, um, when you get feelings that you need to do something, I want you to, to trust yourself that that's what you need to follow. Right, and I want to also say you're stronger than what you feel you are. Okay, thank you. And it's time to make you happy now, please. Yeah. I want you to. I want you to wave goodbye at all the people that have put you down, and use your eyes, which are at the front of your head for a reason, to look forward. And see all the wonderful stuff that's coming towards you. Okay. Yes. Um, I want. I, I, sometimes when we're in the darkest moments, it's difficult to see the light. But I want to say the light is uh, very near to yourself, and um, you are at the end of the tunnel and very close to that. I certainly want to go to the show me honor around November the thirtieth. I also want to say there is a, a pass in the beginning of December from a, a person okay. in spirit. Yeah. Okay. But I want to say things are getting better for you and um, it is your kind, loving nature and your openness that is what will get you through. Don't feel that by having a big heart that you've got and being kind uh, to people that that's a weakness in fact it's a quality and i want to, for you to almost pat yourself on the back and say you know what despite what everyone feels i am a good person and uh, the father figures just coming in to sort of say to you he's proud of you but also that you should be proud of yourself would would you also stand understand a younger person around you in spirit place um, because you need to know that they are around you also, and I feel you feel them. Yeah, I've, yes. So again, what they're saying is just keep positive. They are there to support you. You feel them, you know they're around, and there is a bright future, a much brighter future. And this is just something that you need to go through to come out the other side. Does that make any sense, my lovey? Uh, it does. I, uh, yes. Would you also understand the age of 38 had been quite a difficult time? Yes. Right. Now, the reason that Spirit give me that as, as evidence for yourself, because as yeah. I said to you, when we're, in our, when we're in a dark time, it's sometimes difficult to see the light. And what I want to say, because uh, the, the father figure is a very practical man, he's just saying to you, you got through that, you're going to get through this. 
fantastic. Does that help you, Fellini, at all? It does. It does. It does. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, it's really nice to to uh, have you um, call in. Have you any any last questions before we move on to the next caller? No, but I'm looking forward for another read from you one day. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so I will call Do back. <laughs> I will call back another time. Bless you, honey. You take care. God bless. Thank you. Thank you very very much. You take Bye-bye. care. Take care. Okay, um, well, that was Fellini. We've got um, our next caller here. Oh, <laughs> we've got our next caller here, Darcy. So, hi, Darcy. How are you? Hey, how are you? I'm, I'm good, thank you very much. Uh, bless you. Nice to talk to you again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I, just I, thought to... I would call it and, and see if, uh, yes, if, uh, if our, if our uh, friend keeps showing up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. Um, I'm, I'm just going to pass you over to, uh, uh, to, to uh, you know, um, um, they're around already, aren't they? You can tell. Uh, so I'm just going to pass you always. over. <laughs> I just pass you over to uh, to Kirsty and Matt. Hello, okay. hello, Darcy. Hello. How are you? Um, ha- I'm good, thank you, I'm good. Um, I'd like to say there's a mother figure around you at the moment and um, I want to say this mother figure would have been very busy in the kitchen. She shows me a lot of um, um, like big bowls full of um, yummy food and things she's making like cakes and pies and pasties and all sorts of, um, I want a big old fashioned mixing bowl that she gives me. Um, I want a lady that, that would have, sorry, madame, I, I want a lady that would have worked very hard and they're already, and, and I feel like this homemade bread coming at me. She's making me feel very hungry. Would you understand this lady? Please? <laughs> it, it sounds like my mom, <laughs> yes, either my yes, mom or my great grandmother. Okay. Well, she's, um, I want to say she's coming in a very lovely energy, rather like yourself. And um, I feel that she would have enjoyed feeding people. <laughs> and she would have enjoyed she did. making she li- <laughs> Sorry. And she yeah, would have enjoyed she liked making them. She did. Yeah. Making them happy via yeah. food. Yes. Okay, yes. The, uh, I do feel this is your mum as opposed to your, your grandmother, but I do feel there was a closeness between the two anyway. Um, I also want to say with the lady, she, uh, she comes in with a beautiful smile and uh, uh, a very um, uh, curvy um, body. Uh, and she is, I want to say, if you had the cuddles that you uh, from this lady, you would have known you've been cuddled and you would have known that you were loved. Would you understand this? Yeah, yeah, that sounds like her. Now, I she's, want to she's, say... She's been gone a long time, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I want, I want to... to I want to say she has got a lot of similarities to yourself in your bubbly personality and everything else. I want to say... If it was raining outside, she says, well, be thankful for the rain. She wouldn't be um, like, oh, it's raining, it's cold, and she would have been very positive and she would have been very uplifting. And I, I feel that she was very much a good listener. She'd been very inspiring to people. She would have almost been very neighborly and would have always given her time greatly um, to others. But yeah. where she's coming in with this evidence, I want to say to you that um, you give of your time, but the, the important thing about giving time uh, from a spiritual uh, point of view is yes, it's good to give to other people and to be caring and loving and all those principles, but equally we also need to give back to ourselves. And it's about you having some time for you and what makes you happy. Because I do feel that's almost been missed. And I also want to say there's almost this feeling that um, at times I question whether there is, um, I actually know what still makes me happy. Would you understand that? Yes, yes. Um, as she, as I connect further with her, she shows me a. She gives me a memory for you of a huge dresser. Would you understand that, like a shelving thing? Okay. Yeah. 
Um, and um, uh, she just wants to give you that as a memory. I also want um, a, a wooden, a good, strong wooden table. Yes, yes, I still have her kitchen table. Right, thank you. Um, um, she's also talking about um, home comforts. So she would have liked um, to have a cosy house. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, she always did. Um, yes. Yeah, um, I, I feel that um, she would have liked a clean house, but she wouldn't have been a fuss pot with it. No, no. You know, it she didn't was. Didn't want to spend all day cleaning the house. <laughs> no, 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 absolutely not. It would have been clean, and that would have been enough for her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She wasn't like super picky. You, you know, you clean yeah. the house and you're done, and then you go do something else. <laughs> that's ex that's exactly what she shows me. She's giving me cheese. Would you understand somebody that would have had a real love of cheese? Cheese. Yeah, yeah. I guess I guess we all of us. Yeah, love cheese. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because um, she's given me various different ones from soft to ones with holes in to smelly cheese to all sorts of cheese. She's given me, um, and yeah. I also want um, a memory of a proper cheese knife. A proper cheese knife. You know this okay, sort of curvy knife. Okay, that sounds more like my stepfather, but <laughs> um, okay. Um, right, she's she's could giving be, me though. that. Yeah. In. You're just showing me that as a memory, my lovey. That's this is to you. It's not for necessarily linked with her, but this is a, a a memory to you. Okay, for you to okay. understand. Okay. Um, okay. She's also okay. talking. She's also talking about somebody smashing or cracking a bowl or a cup recently. Would you understand this? Some crockery. Just, just lately. Yeah. Or. or I okay. certainly want a memory of it. Would you understand this? Okay. Yeah. Um, and she's also talking um, about somebody missing the step a little bit and nearly falling over. Hmm. I don't know Tripping. about that one. Right, okay. So just please be careful then. <laughs> Up and down the steps. Okay. She doesn't want you to trip, bless you. Um, can, can I... Um, can, can I... Um, she's given me also um, uh, picnics. I want, I want to take you out and give you lots of picnics and get you outside. Would you understand this? Oh, okay. Yeah, that sounds like something she liked. Yes. Um, because I, I feel that you need to get out of the. Can I also say you're not resting enough, please? Uh, no, I haven't been sleeping very well. Yeah, and I feel generally I, I you're wake not up catching a lot. Up, but, you, but you're not catching up through the day either. Would you understand this? Yes. <laughs> I and mean, I sometimes I can get a nap in, but. I, I get to the, 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 the point somewhere between sort of two and four o'clock in the afternoon that I just get an awful drowsiness, but I'm usually busy, yes, so I yes. can't do anything about it. Yes, yes, that's true. Yeah, and, and I feel like I'm having to drink like caffeine or have some sugar or something just to help me get through. Yes, yes. <laughs> so what she's suggesting is perhaps say, clear off world and go and have a nap. <laughs> well that's good if you're not at work but yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah I was going to say if you find out the secret tell us <clears throat> yeah um, yeah. Right. I, uh, I want to say uh, the lady's got a lovely energy I want to say her castle was her home she didn't like as you said earlier that it to be tidy but she liked it to be cosy and she liked to have yes. homely things around um she was more mm -hmm. bothered about opening the door and inviting people in rather than what people thought. She gives me March the 18th as a, as a significant date. Now, when I give a date, it will be, if it's not that exact date, it will be a day either side. What, what, date, what, what date was it? March the 18th. March the 18th. I don't know what that is. Okay, well, it will either be an anniversary, a birthday, or a passing. I also want to give you November the 24th and January the 21st. Wow. I don't, <laughs> I don't know any of those dates. Okay, can I ask you to hold on to those? They may come to you later because they're giving me specific dates. But what I want to say to okay. you is that you um, 
you do need to rest and you need to rest more. You're waking up about 2.30, 2.31 in the morning and finding that oh. difficult to get back to sleep. You're also then waking up again about 4, um, 4. 15 uh, in the morning four as well. 4 o'clock. Uh, 4 o'clock every morning, yes. Yeah. So <laughs> what I want to say to self is that you need to quieten your mind. You need to quieten your mind um, because there's lots of going on in your mind. Now, we have a saying in the UK, I don't know if they have it in the US, which is you can't see the wood for the trees because there's that much going on in our minds. <laughs> we can't almost think forward. Yeah. Do you understand that? And I, I yeah, almost want yes. to say... Uh, to yourself, right? Do you understand the significance of Albuquerque? Albuquerque, because she's Maybe. giving me Albuquerque. I, I, I think I think I have a cousin that lives there. Yeah, well, she's giving that's me Albuquerque. That's the only thing I can think of Albuquerque. Yeah, okay. I think so my one cousin lives Albuquerque. there. Okay, but the, okay. Um, the, the 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 what I want to say to you: I want less technology. I know that's a bit ironic, and please don't go off the uh, off the show now <laughs> as a result of that. But um, I do want to say to help you to rest, less technology. Yeah, okay, okay, I understand because that. Because I, I need to calm the mind, and it's almost like um, I'm being told that you used to do quite a lot of reading when you were about the age of thirteen. Uh, yeah, uh, ever since uh, I learned to read, like to at four or five, I've been reading my whole life. Yeah, yeah, but I want more of that and away from the technology, because okay. I also want to say you're very sort of spiritual yourself, and I want to say there is times that you've had experiences yourself, but also that your words have instilled and give comfort to others, and at times you question whether they're your actual own words, but people have thanked you for the comfort you've given. Do you understand that? Yes, yes. Yes, I've been I've been trying to learn more about my abilities. I keep hearing that I'm going to actually have some sort of awakening here pretty soon. That's what I've been told. Well I would agree with that, but I would also stop looking for it. Um because it's almost okay. like you're anticipating it to happen, so therefore it's blocking it to come. Does that make sense? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, I also need to give you a memory of a creaking well, she's given me a creaking door, something that needs a spot of okay. oil. I, I literally I'm okay. getting <laughs> <laughs> <Would> you, <laughs> um, she's also talking she's also talking about a window um that needs a bit of attention. Okay. Um, I feel that um, it's um, it's um, I feel it's like um, uh, uh, it's either a crack in it or it needs to be slammed shut or, or there's, there's there's something that needs to be sorted with it. Okay, I'll look um, around. I don't know, but I guess I'll have to check the windows. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, I I'll actually want that as a memory. The window. Okay. Uh, because there okay. was a draft coming through. Okay, I right, I lived okay. in a house a long time ago. Yeah, that yeah. Actually, when we tried to close the window, the whole window broke. Maybe she that's what she's talking about. That was a long time right. ago. Uh, uh, well, as, as you as you're probably well aware, that there is no time in spirit. So unfortunately, they yeah. will get you racking the gray cells there, <laughs> most definitely. Um, and and as for um, your. Um, awakening as you as you called it um do you meditate i try i have a hard time turning my mind off and i try but i i have a hard time shutting my mind off to like relax enough to do right. that because, because what they're giving me is on youtube they've got um 10 minute meditations on um if you look up um, 10 minute meditations it's something that you can okay. sit on a chair and do just put some ear, earphones on and you can just daily practice um and they're asking okay. you if possible to do it in the morning and the evening just 10 minutes and then you'll soon get okay. it training because meditation is very hard and people think it's it's um it's easy but it's not it takes a lot of 
practice to to do it properly so they're asking you but i also need to say when that happens you're going to hear some things and it's almost going to make you jump don't be worried or frightened because this is all of a sudden it's going to be like uh, almost like a bolt of of lightning come through it's like oh my gosh i really heard that and there's no <laughs> doubt whatsoever okay there won't be any doubt whatsoever okay. Okay, and the okay. very last thing, because okay. I'm conscious of time, is that um, you say you struggle with meditations. If you um, get a, a, a large candle, like a church candle, almost like um, close your eyes slightly so you can just see the flame and just focus on that flame. That will allow you to calm your mind and be able to focus. And then your mind will calm, allowing you to go into the meditation. Oh, OK. OK, that's a good idea. Thank you. Darcy, um, as um, Kirsty and Matt were linking in with you and uh, Kirsty mentioned uh, a dresser, would you understand uh, a dresser that's meant for the kitchen but is in another room? Um, yeah, I think so. I think, oh, like I'm guessing like a china cupboard. Or yeah, china something cabinet, like, like that. They call them. Yes, I still yeah. have her china cabinet. <laughs> okay, because um, there there are four drawers in this, and as I'm looking at it, the second one in on the right hand side that seems to stick a little bit. Would that make sense to you? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's an old-fashioned thing where you can put soap on the runner to make it a little bit easier. But the reason that uh, um, your mum's brought this up is because I've got images of you standing in the room just scratching your head. So I know that you've lost something. I don't think it's in that drawer, but it, it's something that you've been um, – you haven't been fretting about it, but you have been – you know, it's annoying you. So um, uh, it, it's just it's just frustrating you. Would that make sense to you? Yeah, yeah. I'm always losing things. So. <laughs> oh right. Okay. Yes. So, that, yeah. Okay. We're, we're That's not. That's probably every day. Down, yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Um, but but uh, uh, whatever this thing is, um, she says, just don't worry about it. Just just let it go. It will turn up. I do get the feeling okay. it's your grandmother, and we know she has a lovely sense of humour. <laughs> I think she's hidden it. She's just playing games with you. But um, she, so she, it, 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 yeah, gra Grandma always shows up and and messes with us, and she's always... <laughs> uh, absolutely, absolutely. So she, she's um, she's messing physically now. So she she's moved it. It will turn up somewhere <laughs> silly. You know, like next to the kettle okay, or ne you know somewhere really oh, obvious. Okay. So, um, okay, we're going to have to let you go, honey. It's been lovely um, to speak to you again, however briefly. Um, so we're just going to go into a break, and we'll be after this. Bless you, Darcy. Okay, bless you too. Thank you.
Have you ever wondered what's behind the open door? Then tune in with hosts Maggie Renee and Vicki Johns every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Only on the Paramania Radio Network. If you would like to be kept up to date on upcoming show information and events here on Paramania Radio, then please take the time to click on the like button above the chat room to like our Facebook page. And click on follow to follow us on Twitter. Thank you for listening to Paramania Radio. You are listening to Paramania Radio. Hi, welcome back. You're listening to uh, Leo Bonomo on um, Paramania Radio. And we've got Kirsty and Matt Grogan here, and we've been doing a couple of readings in the last uh, uh, third. And uh, we've been talking about all kinds of, of things that uh, Matt and Kirsty are involved in, and that includes spiritual healing, workshops. Um, mediumship of course and they do perform together and uh, it's fairly unusual to have uh, a husband and wife team as mediums to work from the platform there are lots of um, people that team up of course for all kinds of things and sometimes it's a special um, but but they work together as well as apart and um, they're um, they're, they're um, both healers as well and uh, so I've been having a very nice time. So welcome back. Thank you. Yep, thank you. No problem. And thank you very much for giving readings to uh, Fellini and Darcy. Um, okay, so have you got any um, workshops or demonstrations that are coming up that you could um, list for us so that, uh, you know, people can come along and attend? Yeah, we've got um, a number of workshops coming up uh, in the UK, uh, which are angel workshops, which we've got coming up in October and November. And you can find those on our website, which is mkclairvoyance.weebly.com. And in there is where we work and how we work and uh, quite a lot of the venues. Um, We are generally UK-based. Um, till Christmas but then we're out to uh, Spain um, in uh, Jan- the end of January which is uh, um, for about a week from about the 20th and we're going to be um, doing private readings and uh, serving some of the churches out in Spain um, we're then um, in the spring we'll be having uh, Reiki workshops and um uh, preparing workshops for people who are interested in going onto platform and moving towards mm. platform and, and given the, uh, the skills um, to, to have that, because as you know yourself, it's not easy to stand up there and, mm. you know, every intricate um, detail is taken note of by the people in the churches from, you know, from the way you come across uh, yeah. the, the wordings that you use uh, the terminology, because uh, as a lot of professions, we have our own individual terminology that we, we take for granted and we sometimes um, use. And people are like, well, what does that mean? And um, we've got to be careful of that. And, you know, it's about preparing the mediums of tomorrow. We've been blessed yeah. by having good teachers and uh, opportunities and experiences. And we want to then pass that on. And that's where we feel our work is for the, um, being able to demonstrate, being able to prove evidence, and also to be able to teach the next generation. Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, evidence is something that um, I'm particularly uh, very hot on. And um, it, it is the evidence that, that uh, 
builds up people's confidence not only in mediums which is a good thing to have but also that comfort that there there really is a life after this because people do get quite fretful don't they you know about um uh, if they're very ill and they think you know they sense that the time is is uh coming close and they they can get fretful so it's uh it's very important to, to have that knowledge and that comfort. Um, so what kind of books do you both read? Do, do you read the same books or, and, and, and what type? I love um, um, lots of um, angel books. Um, mm. I'm very much into the angels and how they work. Um, I also like uh, a lot of, I know it sounds a bit corny, but a lot of self-help books books are um are pretty awesome for helping you stay positive and um because you know there's a lot of negativity about especially mm. as you well know when you work <coughs> in this world um that uh, this type of life that, that we have it, it does you either love it or hate it and there can be an awful lot of negativity thrown at you and it's really yeah. positive to to try uh, it's really important to stay positive uh, sort of from that um because you know you need to have a little bit of a a hard shell because you know there's all sorts of delightful names that you get called as you probably (laughs) well know (laughs) yeah i I think the problem is once the the head's above the parapet a little bit um there is a lot of jealousy and and sometimes of course you get targeted by skeptics as well you know uh, personally i'll say the whole thing is a badge of honor you know that if you (laughs) if if you've come to their notice you must be doing something right so um, (laughs) and at least they're leaving somebody else alone if they're having a go at you (laughs) well yeah there is that as well you know um but it but it, it can be it can be difficult um um, to deal with and uh, you know people have this impression um, that this is this is all very spiritual and white and fluffy and um, you know we would hope it is um, but again I think the reality is as you've said that uh, sometimes you know um, uh, things do uh, things don't play out that way which is unfortunate and after all you know we're all in it together aren't we you know mm-hmm. uh, we all work for spirit. I think the people that um, um, have problems with that, that are not sceptic, are those who, who tend to uh, either work for themselves or, or you know, work for their ego. Um, and that's, uh, that's a shame, really. Um, yeah. But it happens. It happens in all walks of life, doesn't it? I think yeah. the only people that really praise and encourage and are happy for you um as a population um are the americans to be honest um because they they love a success and and they love um people to be successful uh whereas in in britain and other countries like you know we we tend to think oh god look at them you know they're rubbish i can do better you know or you know we 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 sometimes don't want others to succeed and i know in america um they love a winner as they say so it's a wonderful uh, attitude it is it is uh, i i think so because you, you know uh, um although you can take it too far because um even if you're second or third um they don't like a loser so <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, yeah it, it has its balance um over here we kind of think well if it's second or third you know that's kind of all right um but it, if, if you've got number one it's like oh they don't deserve that uh, i think <laughs> i think here here it's very difficult you know we we kind of balance it the other way um brilliant is there any part of mediumship either of you that you um really uh admire or have an interest in or would like to develop maybe physical um anything that really kind of um, attracts you uh, for me personally i, I love philosophy mm. i love bringing through the address and the words of spirit and I like to do that through the words of spirit. I don't like to almost put my own spin on it because, you know, yeah. how can how can you better the words that come directly from spirit? And, you know, for them to be able to articulate and give the words in such a profound and 
informative way. I, you you couldn't write a book on on the way that they word it that just is so succinct and and is very much uh, important to the people. Uh, so that is certainly passionate to me and inspirational writing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For me, mm-hmm. sorry. sorry. So for for me, um, I'd I'd like to develop my trance more. Um, mm. I, I like uh, physical mediumship. Um, at the moment, I um, I mean we do sort of uh, do do that within our our uh, classes and and things. But um, for a personal, for an, on a personal level, I I love the way that uh, trance works. It's so completely different from uh, mental mediumship. And, you yeah. know, obviously we use mental mediumship um, sort of every day in, in that. And there's, there's, you know, and there's nothing, no one better than the other. But it's just nice for a change to be different. And it's quite unpredictable because, you know, um, again, maybe this says something about my personality, but um, I tend to get the naughty ones come through. <laughs> so it's... <laughs> So it's always quite um, quite entertaining, you know. Um, um, a lot of people get sort of all this wonderful philosophy and words yeah. of wisdom, and I don't. I won't tell you what I get, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think it's nice because, again, you, you know, um, I mean, we've proved it on the, this um, this show. Um, uh, uh, spirit have a wonderful sense of humour, and they yeah. don't lose it. And uh, I think it's wonderful to show them as they are and, you know, they can be extremely funny. And I think that that's a a wonderful thing. And again, it it shows the way that you work. Um, They, of course, take advantage of your personality and they kind of weave these things in. So um, I think that's great. And and going back to to Matt, um, I agree. I think philosophy is very, very important. It's it's tended to have got lost in a lot of churches, and you do hear the excuse that um, people don't want to hear it. But to be honest with you, I think because they don't hear it and they don't therefore understand it, when somebody comes along that's maybe new to the church and philosophy starts coming through, uh, they just don't want to hear it. So I, I think it's a shame that that um, it's missing from a lot of churches, but I do think it's wonderful when it comes through. It's quite sad, really, though, because mm. a lot of the philosophy is given for the whole of the congregation within a church. Yeah. Um, so those that don't get a message from the actual medium can take comfort and inspiration and love from the actual uh, philosophy. Yeah. And, and as, you, as you know, when you get um, a good address, it, it kind of, well, it will relate to, to everyone, uh, however big the audience might be in some way. And I've found also that, that whatever is touched on in the address sometimes also comes through through messages. So it's kind of personalised a little more. And, and we, we touched on early on in the show about individuality, mm. and that's where really um, spirit touch everybody individually yeah. in the sense that it touches their soul. Uh, but, you know, the words of spirit are such a wonderful thing. I mean... I, I run a, one of my Facebook groups that I run um, is the American Spiritualist Group on Facebook, and um, that and my my other Facebook groups we put uh, you know messages from spirit, thoughts of the day, and some you know the amount of people in different countries who said you know what I, I needed to hear that today, and this is where the power of technology through spiritual terms, you know. It's such a powerful medium, how it gets mm. across to different people in different countries, in different languages, very, and gives them people, gives those people what they need at that moment in time. Yeah, we we had um, uh, a friend of mine, uh, uh, Marion um who, who's uh, 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 a Swedish medium, and. Uh, she was saying that when she she first came over as um, a, a very attractive woman, a, a, as a, a blonde twenty uh, something, and uh, the churches were quite unaccepting of her because um, 
of the way that she looked and her age and then this kind of goes touches back on on what we uh, were talking about before about ages and mediums and um and so they weren't very accepting of her um but she she is quite a special medium and and obviously uh the whole purpose of, of the message is to to be evidential and to give that comfort of another life uh, personally so we know we exist but also that contact and uh, she was saying on the show that um, still happens now sometimes but she used to do um, a church service and uh, as she stood up to to give the demonstration vases of flowers for example would rise up in the air float through the air and cross the stage and go down and she said that that emptied the church um, <laughs> you know and uh, because obviously people are going for um evidence and when they get it in a way that's not expected it's like oh crap you know and you can almost hear the ghostbusters tune you know <laughs> at that and thinking oh didn't want that you know yeah, it's um yeah. We understand that pretty well, actually, because um, I remember serving a church once and um, um, I was up there and then I, I actually blew the microphone up. Um, we're not really <laughs> quite sure how it worked, but it yeah. just completely, in the middle of it, it just completely stopped working. Um, and they said, oh, there was new batches and they handed up, a couple of them ended up having a little bit of a, a row in the background. They were new batches. No, they weren't. They were, they were. And of course, the spirit <laughs> completely flattened the batteries and made it go yeah. poof. And it was all a little bit of a shock, but it's just awesome how, how spirit can sort of drive that energy in. Absolutely. And, and you know, we'll, uh, I say we, we're well known. Uh, mediums, um, especially physical mediums, um, are well known for interfering with uh, electrical equipment uh, of one kind or another. Yeah. Uh, there's a very good friend of mine, Jock Brokus, who... who um, uh, interviewed the other week and when I was in the States um, he was telling me that he, he does have problems with um, with uh, electrics at times and we went into a hardware store and uh, uh, he'd just been telling me prior that uh, sometimes they have problems with the tills and so he, he went and picked up whatever he wanted and we walked towards this whole bank of screens and tills and everything went off Oh, and oh, um, no. oh. so they're all sitting there panicking and that he said uh, I'll think he said it's me I'll walk out and the, the person at the till looked at him like he was a complete idiot of course and he walked out <laughs> the building and everything came back on so <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, look on I, his face was to be seen it was <laughs> fabulous I, I have to say we again I've had well, not quite to that extent, but similar situations because, um, you know, the the, com the computer's going really slow and um, it's um, getting, uh, you know, it's, it's causing problems. And I say, right, OK, I'll step away. I'll step away and it's done. And it goes back to normal again. So, you know, obviously I need to be getting in with that trance, like I said before, and getting rid of some of that energy. <laughs> yeah, I've got a, a very good friend. He's passed over now. He passed over quite young, Glenn. And... Um, and uh, uh, he, he was a computer expert, and um, uh, I, so I used to take my computer over to him when um, it had just stopped working, you know, and, and he'd say to me, what the hell have you done to it? And it's like... <laughs> I haven't done I, He knew what I did for a living. And I said, well, I haven't yeah. done anything to it. And he said, yeah. but, you know, you completely trashed the thing. I mean, <laughs> I was I was more frustrated because, obviously, it always happens at a crucial time, doesn't it? You know, yes. you, you've got something, yeah. yeah. And, and then, uh, it, it, pardon the pun, it gives up the ghost. You know, <laughs> and I take it, along to, take it along to him and he goes, what have you done? I went, well, I was only doing it. You couldn't have been. You couldn't have been just tired of the letter, <laughs> you know. It's, um, it can be expensive being a medium. <laughs> yeah, yeah, few computers, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, I tend to leave that to everybody else now, and then I don't mess it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Um, well, I've only got me, so it's it's oh. like turn it on, w hope it starts up, and pray. Um, it's been wonderful talking to you both. Um, to you and to you, definitely. It's been lovely. 
Oh, bless you, bless you. And two hours goes so quick. Um, give us your, you might want to spell it out Weebly because um, in case some of the Americans listening yeah, don't uh, understand it. But give yeah, us your website again. It's mkclairvoyance.weebly, which is dot com, And you can find us on Facebook and Twitter at Matt and Kirsty Clairvoyant Mediums. Fantastic. It's been wonderful talking to you. Thank you so much. And uh, for the listeners, (laughs) bless you. Uh, We'll see you next week.